Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is chapter 64 of that side character, and this one is titled, Watch Out for Dad. I'll do it, your dad threatened. I'll call them. Kenma just stood there apathetically. He didn't know that Lolita had safeguarded your name, but despite not knowing this, he also didn't feel threatened by your dad. At all. If the police got involved, then you could talk to them about getting some kind of restraining order against your dad, and that's how he saw it playing out. Your dad saw that Kenma didn't seem scared, and his face went red with anger. Oh, the absolute gall of kids these days, he seethed internally. Having nothing more to say to either the receptionist or Kenma, he gave both a rather curt goodbye, then left, storming off down the stairs by himself. Kenma watched him go, and then got ready for first class, but not before texting you and telling you about the happenings with your father. Back in your little studio apartment, you had spoken to Lolita about what had happened, and she admitted that she had warned the police of him, and that if he ever rang to file a missing persons report, they could rest assured that you were safe. You were so grateful. Lolita had been like a curvy angel that had tottled her way into your life, and you certainly didn't want her to leave. You stayed home that day, playing with Lolita's kitty. She was a gorgeous little thing, super playful, despite only having three legs, and the thought crossed your mind about breeding her with Kenma the cat. Hey, you asked the purring cat on your lap, do you want to be a mum one day? The kitty didn't even stir, and you smiled softly as he stroked her from head to tail. Yeah, I guess I'd like to be a mum, you replied to your own question, sitting there and letting your mind go a bit wild. The thought of actually having babies with your boyfriend did make you squirm with nervous excitement though. He was on your mind for most of the day. So at the end of the day, you texted him to see if it would be alright for you to go to his place. You'd missed him. Hey, is the coast clear? Can I come to yours? You texted. Yes, and yes. He sent back. Okay, you replied with a smiley face emoji. You checked the time and then got up and prepared to leave. It would take you a little while to get to Kenma's place anyway, so leaving now was a good idea. With one last goodbye to little Betty Boop, you left, happily making your way to the bus stop that would take you to Kenma's place. Your dad still hadn't given up and was back home fuming about this whole situation. He couldn't rely on the police to help, he couldn't rely on the school to give out any information, so his last resort was to prey on the classmates to ask if they knew anything. He knew around about what time the school would finish, so he was back at the gate shortly after the final bell rang, waiting for some students to pass by. He had to ask a few students at first, and got a few dud replies before a girl from your class walked by. Excuse me, your dad said politely to her. Would you happen to be in Yin and Kenma's class? Uh, yes, she replied dubiously, looking him up and down. I'm Yin's father, he introduced himself. Yeah... She replied again, not knowing where this was going. I'm trying to get in contact with my daughter, but it appears that her phone is off and I've been told that she wasn't at school today. I'm concerned, he said, with as much worry in his voice as he could muster. Yeah, the girl replied again, still not completely on board with this. So far, his story was checking out, because she knew that you hadn't been in class that day. It had given her more time to check out Kenma, without you being around. She was the one who had been interested in him. Would you know where Kenma lives? I know they're dating, your dad stated. I think she might be at his place. This piece of information really ticked the female classmate off, and she scowled at him. Ah, uh, yeah, I do actually. He lives just up the road here. She pointed in the direction of his house. If she's going to be anywhere, it'll be at his place, and who knows what they'd be getting up to, she added, just to add fuel to the fire that was already raging underneath your father. He scowled back at her, but nodded his thanks. Thank you very much, I'll go and get her now. She nodded, still pissed at the thought that you and Kenma might be under the sheets together, but also happy that if that were the case, then you were going to get your ass handed to you by your father once he got there. Satisfied that she had totally screwed up your afternoon, she turned and headed happily down the street towards her own home. A good half hour later, you hopped off the bus and skipped down to Kenma's house, not seeing your father hiding nearby. He had been scouting out the houses and had pretty much nailed which one belonged to Kenma's family because it was the only one that hadn't had people come to it. Sure, he could have been wrong, but he was across the road and had a clear view of all five houses, so if Kenma or you left the house then he would see, so you can imagine his surprise when he saw you walking down the street towards Kenma's house. He thought that you'd been there already. Wait, where's she been if she's not been at Kenma's house? This confused him. 
but he had your location now, so he waited for you to go inside and get comfortable for a bit before he went to ring the doorbell. If no one answered, then he'd just wait until a parent came home and stopped them at the door to their own house. Kenma came down from his room and let you in, and you shared a hug and a kiss before going upstairs to chill together. You had missed Kenma the cat too, so spent a little time playing with him before asking your boyfriend about the day. Uh-oh, spaghetti -o, but I've just seen the title of the next chapter, and it's Beware Guardian Lolita and Her Wrath, so it's going to be a good one. I'll see you tomorrow.